I, I would also like to start by acknowledging, um, again, the territory of the Musqueam, Squamish and Tsleil-Waututh people on whose territory um, we gather. And I do that uh, not just as a formality, but um, because it's in acknowledging that that we acknowledge um, the issue of displacement that is uh, historically uh, rooted in indigenous communities in Canada. And um, I think uh, I wanted to just um, frame the things I talk about in that issue of displacement because the um, people that I'm most interested in uh, in this neighborhood are uh, people who are um, generally facing displacement uh, that is incredibly uh, difficult and, well, catastrophic for them, actually. Some people are displaced and uh, they just find another place to live. But um, anyways, the, the people that I'm most interested in are the people in this neighborhood um, who are the working poor, largely immigrant populations, homeless, and those living on fixed incomes or income assistance. And these people, as I said, are really familiar with displacement. Immigrant populations are coming from uh, experiences of displacement in their own countries. Uh, I'm not going to go into why they come here. Most of us here probably know that they don't come here by choice most of the time. And Grandview Woodlands has traditionally, historically, been a place of welcome for them. Um, uh, yeah, they're accepted here. People on fixed incomes or the working poor are all, all often also people uh, displaced in society. Uh, there's little uh, acceptance in our society today for the fact that some folks, for some folks, work is actually not an option. Work as we know it is not an option. And um, Grandview has also been a place that they can afford to live. Uh, single parents have traditionally found uh, housing here in this neighborhood and a place of welcome. We have services here, limited, but we do have services here that um, are very supportive of the working poor, uh, uh, single, fam single um, parent families, and homeless um, people, people with mental health issues. Uh, people at the Kettle do amazing work. Um, McDonald Elementary School, Britannia uh, um, High School, and Community Center it do amazing work here in this community. And um, anyways, I, I feel like that is being gradually eroded. Uh, and like I said, I've, I've lived in Vancouver all my life, uh, in the east side all my life, but in this neighborhood for quite a long time and have, have watched a gradual erosion of that acceptance and that diversity in this neighborhood, and it's very disconcerting to me. And I'm particularly interested in homeless people what, from a, a kind of, um, it's just a personal, it's just a part of my story. So um, anyways, and homeless people are displaced for many different reasons as well. Um, many of them are indigenous people displaced from reserves pushed from pushed to urban centers looking for work, fleeing um, dysfunctional uh, family situations that are brought on by systemic enforcement of residential school enrollment. They become homeless for many reasons as well. These are complex issues and often have found themselves either downtown, but many people find themselves in the Grandview Woodlands area because again, it has traditionally been a very warm and welcoming community. Um, there are lots of things going on for homeless people in this neighborhood. Uh, this space here offers um, a meal for people once a week. Um, and the organization that I'm involved in offers employment to people who uh, have been homeless, uh, who are still homeless, who have mental health issues, um, are on assistance. So there's, there's things going on here. Um, and, and my experience with people who are homeless especially has forced me to um, 
think outside of my uh, old internalized ideas about success and value uh, in communities. And um, I don't know if this is really the place for it, but I you know, fi feel like this, the community plan that the city has presented to Grandview Woodlands is, is a complete sham. And um, it will make uh, living in Grandview Woodlands a cool and uh, hip uh, experience. That's what I see it as. I don't really have a whole lot of time for it. Um, and I think that the folks uh, I know who have struggled to find affordable housing in this neighborhood, they, they really don't have a place here anymore. You can ask people who work at the Kettle who have really struggled to find places for people to live. There, there's nowhere for them to live in this neighborhood. In our work with um, uh, some of the uh, uh, 10 cities that have been involved in, especially the one around the Olympics. It was seen as this great success, you know. There was a whole bunch of people there who were from this community, homeless at the time, who lived down there, and at the end of it, were granted housing. They got housing in a really crappy, most of them, a really crappy hotel uh, downtown. And people would say, oh, they're housed, isn't that awesome? And it was really interesting I, for, to me how that housing kind of all happened. Almost all of the indigenous people were put in one hotel. I mean, I mean it's like freaking racist, it was what it was. But anyways, these, the people that were granted housing, were given housing, were out of the cold. Um, they were in warm places, but they were outside of their community. Some of them really good friends of mine. I never saw them again. Very rarely saw them. And um, that, to me, was a huge loss for this particular community, because those people gave to this community. They came to this program, they volunteered here at Grandview on Thursday nights. You know, they were involved in like political activism. They would help us with uh, leafleting down at Broadway and Commercial when we were working on different issues of poverty. They would be at the kettle. And you know, it, it, they became displaced. They had housing, but they became displaced. And some of them who really couldn't handle being displaced from their communities basically just became homeless again because there's nothing for them. And um, I just, uh, anyways, it's just a, a really hard thing for me to talk about sometimes. Um, and that is, I guess that's the thing that I would like to kind of try and focus on in a way in terms of if we're thinking about renting, rental opportunities for people in Grandview Woodlands. We need to be um, thinking about how we can um, ensure that the housing that is put into this community, that there's some like affordable rental housing that's a part of it. Um, some of the things that the city is doing around, especially housing people who are really vulnerable, is this supportive housing model. And it works for some people, but it doesn't work for the majority of the people. It institutionalizes them. And then uh, there's the other, uh, the other aspect of that is that, the, I mean, the new housing um, that the kettle is going to be putting, because the kettle's going, I mean, Damien and Ken can speak to this, but they're going through this whole process of, uh, uh, rezoning their space, and they're going to eventually have some really amazing stuff in, in the space that the kettle is in down at Venables and Victoria uh, Commercial. That's going to take years, and so in the meantime, they're, they're going to be managing uh, a building down across from St. Paul's. And for that building, I mean, I, I just couldn't believe this, there was like 110 units of supportive housing, 1,200 people have applied for those, those spaces. Uh, it's like mind boggling, you know? Um, so I, I just, um, I guess, would, would wanna encourage us to think about the forces that are um, pushing the people out of our neighborhood. Uh, I don't wanna see this neighborhood become a neighborhood of condominiums and um, high-end rental housing. And uh, unfortunately, I feel like 
uh, homeowners in the neighborhood are really pushing the agenda on what's, what's happening here. And so I would encourage uh, people who do rent to start um, organizing and speaking out. And I'm not so sure that to get involved in the housing plan, but <laughs> maybe some people have energy for that. I don't, don't have a whole lot of faith in it. But I don't know. I'm not sure what it would take. But um, I just wanted to express that um, these people uh, that uh, are, are an integral part of the diversity of this community, the historical diversity of this community, are being pushed out, uh, systematically being pushed out. So, yeah. Um, I just would say just very briefly, the other part that I was supposed to talk about was shared housing. And um, this is another, another thing that I, ha I experience with a lot of the, especially the young people who want to live in this neighborhood. They're, the only opportunities for them are living in uh, shared housing, which is actually illegal. You know, actually the place I live in is probably illegal. You're only supposed to have like, I don't know, two or three uh, family names. Is that how it works? Like, does anyone know? Like, you're only supposed to have, in a single family dwelling, you're only supposed to have two different family names in a house, right? So it, it makes it almost impossible legally for people to live together. I know, but there's some, there's something, I don't know, somebody needs to like, anyways, that's been something that's been thrown at um, some of the projects we've done. It's like we're doing this illegally. So the other thing I'd like to say is that if, if people could like start to support the initiatives of, um, of people who are advocating for um, low-income housing in the neighborhood. It was pretty interesting when um, Grandview, this community, uh, tried to um, get permits for the housing um, uh, project on the corner of Victoria. The resistance that we met in the community it was pretty sad, like pretty sad. And um, anyhow, and that resistance is interesting to me because I know that a lot of people really support that kind of thing. But when it comes to public uh, voicing of that, it's mostly the people who say no that end up coming out to things. So I think if we, like with um, ideas around rental um, rights, if we could get together more and um, yeah, figure out how to do that better, I think that would be really great. <laughs>